Tokyo, Tuesday, 9th of July, 6 p.m. Uh, first item on the agenda is uh, monitoring of exec cabinet member decisions. Any questions or queries from colleagues? Um, can I just ask, actually? Um, yeah. Last meeting, we did get into the mention of uh, the property in West Orton. Adele mentioned it, actually, when we were talking about one or two other things. Uh, has progress been made on that? Because, uh, it, well, the organisation has uh, been cutting the very long grass where the garden used to be. So I'm assuming progress has been made on sorting the lease out on that uh, uh, community asset transfer. Paul? Has there been uh, any... <clears throat> again, it, it's... Um, sorry, uh, Councillor Zamano, it's, it's uh, uh, a property matter so we can oh, we okay. can um and we we have been given very clear instructions not to stray into councillor howarth's territory um <laughs> so uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't like to, to give you an give you an answer that gets me into, into trouble uh yet again um well give us an answer give us an answer <laughs> so uh uh if you if you you know it's okay just, i'll uh... I'll email corporate. I was just wondering why we've sat here, but um, I'm, I'm, I think progress has seems to have moved since last meeting. Yeah, so that's yeah. good. Oh, that's good. good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you. Um, I see no other hands, so I'll move to the next mm -hmm. item on the agenda: procurement of Bolton Care and Repair Service. Uh, John, is that? for you john slater yeah we'll we'll both do a, a little right. bit on 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 this john john has the uh, has the detail so i'll let john go and then i can feed in yeah go on paul yeah uh, okay I, i've got a five minute powerpoint do you want, oh, want just, to put that up yeah just put your microphone down as well john all right sorry not better <laughs> can you hear yeah. me now? yeah yeah <laughs> Do you want me to just run through this briefly? Um, yeah, just to give do. you a give you a yeah, just to help members. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can see it. Okay, um, so obviously you've got the 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 papers, detailed papers. Um, so I'm just going to talk through briefly um, the procurement, the care and repair service, the proposed procurement, and and also. Um, Aligned with that is is uh, some what we're doing in refreshing the private uh, sector housing assistance policy. So I'll talk through those. The purpose of, of the report obviously is to seek approval um, for the tender of the provision of the care and repair service. Um, and, and currently we're looking at a three year service with an option to extend for a further two years. The existing service expires um, 31st of March 2025. Um, and we're also seeking approval to uh, refresh the private sector housing assistance policy. Um, that's a regular refresh, but obviously it's timely to do that as we are um, procuring this service. Um, just a bit of background, if you like, um, in terms of the care and repair service. Um, it's the brand name for, Bolton at Ho uh, for Bolton's um, Home Improvement Agency current providers Bolton at home and it delivers the main elements of the housing assistance policy which is why we want to bring the two together um, main sort of focus of the service provides home improvements and assistance um, for independent living prevents more care, care more, more prevents more costly care options um, and, and obviously in line with relevant acts and legislation the focus of the work is is around um, the elderly or vulnerabilities due to Ill, Ill health and disabled rel, rel, um, residents, including children. Um, we target homes in disrepair or with inefficient heating. Um, and the current service is highlighted at GM level as, as, as best practice, uh, something that other GM authorities should aspire to. And last year, I think, you know, we, we had a lot of challenges, obviously, around sort of increased costs, increased demand, um, recruitment of staff, etc. But we still managed the service within budget. We spent all the budget and we exceeded the targets in terms of delivery and outcomes that we were looking um, to achieve. Just briefly touching on the sort of areas of delivery, the main area being disabled facilities grants. 
anything from sort of ramps and access through wet rooms right up to extensions. Um, we still do some work around home repairs assistance, mainly around older people and hospital discharge. That's using contractors or um, our, our in-house handy person covers gas and electric works along as, as along with some non-technical work. Um, we're working around the affordable warmth and energy efficiency agenda. Um, that's working with GMCA, um, delivering the the uh, feel the benefit campaign. So that that campaign is is looking at reducing um, energy um, energy bills and and also and it's got to be both um, reducing carbon outputs. Um, so 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 the program we run there does both those things. We're working with a company called Next Energy who, who are delivering the um, eco. Um, energy company obligation um, up, um, work in, in Bolton who have been procured to do that and we also still provide some some um, local locally funded council funded work around heating repairs emergency heating um, and, and draft exclusion that sort of thing but backing up the main measures that we're implementing uh, through the GM schemes now um, we've also got housing options for older people hoop um, officer um, and and that officer works with people who are struggling to maintain independence offering advice and housing options available and assisting people to either um, put those measures in place or or to move home if, if that's the uh, the option that is required also doing some work around domestic abuse and violence to, in terms of target hard, hardening and we offer advice and signposting um, in key areas um, just touching on the budget um, it does vary a little bit. We try to get funding in where we can. Uh, obviously, it's been quite challenging more recently. It's around 4.1 million in terms of the annual budget. The bulk of that comes from the DFG allocation, but we've also secured funding through the Housing Support Fund through the council. We do get some GMCA money out to deliver the affordable warmth and energy efficiency measures, as I've mentioned, and, and adult social care also puts some funding in to, um, to pay for the handy person. Um, just touching on and, and again linked to this is the review of the private sector housing assistance policy. Um, we want alignment with the new care and repair contract and, and this policy. Um, we need to factor in some of the contextual changes around budget reduction. Uh, there's no private sector housing capital program anymore. We've got increased costs. We've got increase in demand. Um, Bolton at home who, who are the current provider of the care and, care and repair service, um, subsidise that service, but they're not going to do that in the future, um, they've told us. So what we're really doing is looking at some flexibilities around the use of the DFG budget. So where people have in mandatory disabled grants, maybe we can look at category, category one hazards and other hazards in the home and improve those while we're in there. And looking at the flexibilities around that is, is, is the way forward. Um, we're also looking and build into the to the sort of policy on the contract around innovation and accessing new opportunities as they come on board. And that policy will will be a policy document that will come to cabinet in due course. And um, we've just run an officers workshop and we're pulling together the information um, from that. Just in terms of the procurement of, of care and repair, um, what, we're, what we're, we're asking you for approval is um, that we go out to an open invitation to tender and we appoint a single contractor and the tenders will be advertised in September with the contract awarded hopefully early, early December and that will give us a, a, a bit of time to work through some of the transitional arrangements and, and even chupy arrangements if, if, if the staffing implications um, from Bolton at home who, who have already told us that there, there will be um, staff transfer if it goes to a different provider. Um, with the contract starting on the 1st of April 2025 and the contract we're stating will be subject to an annual review so that will allow us if there is additional funding or reduction in funding to make sure that service progresses um, in line with those um, with, with that annual review. So I hope that was um, helpful um, and um, over to you really for questions and, and obviously I'm seeking approval to, to take that forward. Thanks. I think John, the, Thanks, John. Uh, the, the critical bit is is making sure that, that we get the, um, <clears throat> the policy document right, which will reflect the tender that comes back so that the tendering on the basis of, of uh, the policy that, that will set out the, um, how they need to deliver. And what they need to deliver. Yeah, thank it, you. It, it will 
just to answer that point, Paul, as well, though, we, we obviously will, will, will endeavour to do that, but the contract will stay if the policy changes then that contract changes along with mm. it. So there is flexibilities there because, as I said, we need to refresh mm. that policy all the time depending on budget constraints, et cetera. So there is some flexibility mm. there, but obviously we're we're progressing at that, that line, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Warren? Thanks, Chair. Um, I've got a number of queries regarding this just because I remember being on the Bolton at Homes Operation Committee and the amount of backlog regarding the disabilities grants being actually put through. So one of the questions is, from allocation to the work being done, does does that happen in the, is it a case that it's allocated and then it's put to one side so that, that it's then gotten? Because I know cases where people have been waiting two, three years for adaptations to be done. Um, I've got a lady that's, um, she's got MS and she's three years it's taken for her to get a wet room uh, put on the downstairs of a property so there's that 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 I find quite concerning and, and I kept asking questions about it and a lot of the time they'd say well people are in and out of hospital a lot of the time as you, your report has just pointed out they're in and out of hospital because they're in an unsuitable home and they may have fallen for example um, so the, the, the monitoring of the contract because I know that there are a lot of people that have been waiting a long time for adaptations to be done. There's also the, when the funds are allocated compared to when the work is completed. Um, and I've also got um, a question as well, just because I know that 30K does not go very far if you're having to do an adaptation to a property. Um, so I know that sometimes there is that um, allowable extra, but realistically, how far is this money going to stretch? And I think as well, then that leads on to as well, housing, housing policy and allocation, because I know that a lot of properties have had adaptation grants but then that property's gone then back into the housing allocation list and it's gone to somebody that doesn't necessarily need an adaptation. And then you've got then somebody else that's in a property that's then having to apply for funds for an adaptation. God, I can't say that word today. <laughs> and, and obviously then you've then got a long wait for that work to be completed and an extra cost as well. So I know there's a lot there, but I know that this really impacts on, on residents' lives. So if you could help with any of that, it'd be appreciated. Yeah, and I, I, I think, John, um, I'm conscious that um, going back even <clears throat> 12 months, there was there was there um, we were getting a significant number of complaints and um, we did work with Bolton at Home to improve the processes, improve the, um, the speed of, of making those decisions. Um, the the difficulty um, is around um, the 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 work is identified and then it is up to the the homeowner to to then um, appoint the contractors and and that's where some of the difficulties have occurred and we've had a number of of um, test cases to to uh, to have to go through whereas uh, now the certainly the um the escalation and the complaint process has, has gone down significantly and the speed of of processing the claims has has um been dealt with uh very much I, i'm not aware of any current complaints um but you you're quite right and you, you point out that the uh uh the, the thirty thousand pounds and the ten thousand pounds hasn't changed for for many many years um but the cost of delivering um the the dfg uh building requirements has significantly changed because of cost inflation so we are um we have benchmarked it with with um the company we've brought in to, to help us with the procurement um and you know that i think there will be changes to to how that contract and how that policy will be framed in the future um but as you quite rightly point out um there's a fixed pot of money and we need to decide how best to use that pot of money uh, and how we prioritize that and that will be set out in that policy document that, that we look to update um but the answer is we need we will need to um ensure the processes are as efficient as possible and make sure that that if there is 
and ask for that additional contribution that 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 is something that that is you know is is sufficient and easy to do um but for example can there's other councils who are already working on um recycling stair lifts for example as a as another way of doing it um so if a stair, stair lift is put in and the person um moves out or the circumstances change then um that stair lift is taken out but it's not necessarily recycled and there's opportunities to innovate and do things like that um, and there are examples of how that has worked elsewhere in the country at other councils. Right. Thank you. I, th I think just just a, an, another point you mentioned there about about where we've where we've um, done adaptations and then um, they they are put on their housing register and go to people who don't require adaptations. Um, obviously, um, we're doing all we can to to stop that happening. We have a disability um, register. Um, with people waiting for adapted properties currently and and those will be the the people that they are offered to um first of all um and on, obviously i think you're talking there about social housing stock but but obviously a lot of this work is also done in the in in uh, private accommodation and where people move out of the home as paul said in the new policy we're looking at sort of recycling elements but we also have the, the there is a there is a um you know, funding on the deeds of that property. So if they move out within a 10 year period, then then they have to pay us back, um, you know, some of the money on a sliding scale to bring that that funding back into the pot as well. Um, so we're doing, a, we're doing, a, I think we're doing a lot of things there that that try to address your concerns and I appreciate um, that we, we have had problems in the, in the past, but I think we've made some improvements. We're gonna make some more, we're moving forward with it, but sometimes there is an element of managing that budget as well, because we, we cannot be in a position where we're running out of funding and then we can't deliver the mandatory grants. So some of the stuff is we, we might have different elements and flexibilities in terms of what we do in the future, but we might have to switch those off if we get to a point where we go looking at overspend just to focus on the on the mandatory DFG stuff. So there's a lot of work that's quite complicated, but I think we're trying to iron out a lot of the concerns that you've raised. Can I come that, back really quickly? Uh, okay. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. And then I'll bring um, Mr. Yeah. Dyson in. Yeah. Sorry. It, it's just that the point that I make is obviously I'm a councillor in Brightmit, so that there's quite a lot of ex-council housing stock. And a lot of the casework that I get are from families that have been allocated a property that's got a wet room and they, they then complain because it's not suitable to bathe young children so so that's how mm. I know that, that there is quite a um, significant problem because the amount of casework I get from people that are then going through to um, independent living services and families that get in touch with me because they're asking for a bath so so that's how I know that, that it is a problem um, but thank you. Councillor Warren, is that, is that mainly Bolton at Home properties? Yeah. So, um, as part of as part of the um, the the contract we have with with Bolton at Home and 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 the transfer agreement, um, Bolton at Home mm -hmm. pay the first. I think it's one point two million annually of their own DFGs to their own stock. So, from the council's point of view. We have quite kind of limited ability to 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 control that aspect because it's their stock and it's their money. Um, so I think what you're talking about there is probably about more about Bolton Home and how they manage it rather than what we do. But um, I I will work. I do obviously we work closely with Bolton at Home and I will I will pick that issue up and see if we can you know make some improvements in in there as well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dyson, do you want to come oh, in before Councillor I... Wilkinson's got his hand up? Uh, I'll get. I'll bring uh, Councillor Wilkinson in, but I thought uh, uh, John had indicated because he had something relevant to what you were talking about. Thank, thank you, thank you, Chair, and um, um, thank you for correcting my colleague as well and bringing me into the uh, into the discussion at a timely point. Um, 
I uh, I really just 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 wanted to pick up on on probably what is a fairly obvious point, but I think you know in essence we are procuring a system which will which will move from um, as you say application through to um, uh, physical um, delivery of works on site. I think I think one of the key points picking up on Councillor Warren's um, concerns is around ensuring that we have appropriate contract management arrangements in place, and I think clearly um, uh, you know both John and Paul have articulated you know the various challenges. Um, and, and factors that come into play and may influence the timescales associated with delivery of works uh, in a particular property. But I think um, one of the key pieces of work, certainly from my side, as we move into the tender and procurement phase, will be to ensure that we have appropriate uh, management uh, arrangements in place. And that might be a series of you know, quantitative metrics and qualitative metrics so that we can have a confidence uh, in service delivery moving forward. So that will be a piece very much linked to the procurement exercise. So uh, just, 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 just a minor point here, just to, uh, to pick up, as I say, on the um, uh, the quality assurance process as a guess that we will look to bring into this moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson? Yeah, thanks, Actor. Um, I mean, it's a good report, but I mean, basically, it's spreading jam very thin. And that, well, that's the, the worrying bit about it, um, because, yes, we achieved, you know, the spend. Um, we did quite a lot of work, you know, in the, in terms of completions. Uh, the one thing what does worry me is how many people are waiting, how many people you know are in this pipeline of uh, of need, uh, and how in reality how we're going to even attempt to uh, get some of this under control. Uh, what does worry me is is in relation to um, eating improvements, uh, cold and damp, etc. Because we've got a lot of uh, older property in this in this town. And how we can actually, uh, you know, make some inroads into it because I, I actually don't think we are. I know we've got, you know, 500 uh, completions done last year, but the the, uh, the length of time that people have to take uh, getting, a, you know, adaptions because of uh, health related, uh, one recently, where they were waiting ages and ages and ages and ages, and, and the, the man had had his leg amputated. And, and was waiting and waiting and waiting. And, it, you know, we just do not seem to be um, making inroads into it. We're just like treading water. Uh, so I'd be interested to see, uh, you know, somewhere in the information and the reports where we actually are against real uh, need requests. Because it's all right saying we've done X, but what's behind X? What's in, you know, in the long list? Because if we don't make any progress in that long list, people are suffering, uh, you know, and somehow uh, we need more funding. I don't know. Uh, uh, nobody's been listening for a long while, so hopefully somebody will this time. Thank you. I think, Chair, um, <clears throat> you know, there, there is an opportunity. We're working with uh, GM um, and uh, uh, to to find routes to funding and secure additional funding wherever possible. Um, we're working with the private sector to to get those assessments of properties done. Um, obviously, it's it's under um, Rachel Tanner and, and um, uh, her team in terms of the, um, uh, uh, the enforcement process. Um, so we're it, we're not we're always doing things in partnership with other other areas uh, and I think the important thing is um, we need to constantly feed back that um, there is a risk within GM that, that we are there isn't enough money as you say Councillor Wilkinson to do everything that we need to do um, and um, you know there's, there's an opportunity to to keep feeding back um, and to try and raise the profile and, and identify um, what the need is and and um, what the ask is uh, across GM to to try and secure some additional funding, and and that'll be part of of everything that we do um, uh, on top of the procurement process. Thank you. Um, I see no hand, so um, I'm going to approve the report. And uh, this is the only item on the agenda now, so. Uh, declare the meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, thank you members. Bye.